In the United States, there are thousands of monuments and markers and tablets relating to Civil War units, Civil War skirmishes, or actions all across the country. For the most part, the monuments early on were erected by the veterans themselves. At first, there were monuments placed to mark where men had been killed. There's a famous monument that was placed on the Battle of First Bull Run within a few months after the fighting. As time went by, the survivors of the units that fought in these battles place monuments at the site of their engagement to mark the place where their unit was positioned during the battle. And this was kind of an interesting transition in monuments at that time. In the 1880s and 1890s, as the veterans started to get older and wanted people to understand the uh, events that occurred during the American Civil War, there was more of a desire to place monuments at these sites. And I always think back, um, do you think you had any trouble placing a monument in the 1880s uh, and passing an appropriation through the state legislature when every member of the state legislature was a veteran of the American Civil War? For the most part, these monuments were placed by units, regiments. The federal government in later years placed markers to designate where brigades or divisions were involved in some of these engagements. So while most monuments on Civil War battlefields represent units that were involved in the fighting, we also have monuments that honor individuals. Uh, these could be monuments or markers at a spot where someone was killed in the battle, uh, they are headquarters markers. There are equestrian statues, not just on Civil War battlefields, but in uh, cities all across the country. Um, there's a very popular story I hear almost every day on tours associated with these equestrian statues. Uh, and it's one of those stories that's made its rounds and everybody seems to know it, that if you look at an equestrian statue, if the horse of the rider has one hoof in the air, the general was wounded in the fighting. And if the horse has two hooves in the air, then the general was killed. Uh, this story has absolutely no basis in fact. It's just a made up story and it's been popularized over the years, probably by battlefield guides. Uh, it, for instance, uh, Washington DC, I am told, has 30 equestrian statues and the story does not work on 20 of them. At the moment, we're standing in front of the monument that honors a civilian that fought in the Battle of Gettysburg, John Burns. He was 69 years old. He ran out on the fighting on July 1st, joined in the battle, was wounded in the fighting, and was captured. He survived the battle, survived the war, um, became somewhat of a national celebrity. And in 1903, the state of Pennsylvania appropriated money and dedicated a monument to John Burns on the Gettysburg battlefield honoring him for his services as the only civilian to actually fight in the battle. But for the most part, the monuments that we see today on Civil War battlefields were placed by the veterans themselves to mark where these events occurred.